be here. I want the people speak English, that's good. Okay. Uh, how can I get to the next slide? Where is it? Oh. Ah, yeah. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay, so. <clears throat> Hello everybody, my name is Erasmus Olmarschi and if, if that name sounds familiar to you, it's probably because of this guy, um, Olmarschi Laszlo, famous in Hungary, the English patient is Angol Betek. Um, <clears throat> his life was very modified, I would say, for that Hollywood production, but it was very good for our family because suddenly everybody got to know the name Olmarschi, at least in Hungary. Yeah, and in the United States, but the movie came out in 1996, so that was a long time ago, and um, we don't really profit from that anymore. It's, it's too long ago. Um, I will tell you the story of the Almashi family, just a little bit. This is Bernstein Castle, Borov Janke, and this is the place where Laszlo was born. My sister and I are now the sixth generation of all machines that run the place, and I will talk about the challenges that we face today. This is my great 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 grandfather, <laughs> Olmarschi Eduard, and he bought the place in the year 1892. And how did he run the place? Well, firstly, um, back then the Olmarschi family was incredibly rich which helps to maintain the castle. And the other thing is, we, as we there, there were a lot of forests, um, land, farms, and he uh, established that side on the right side, there was the Styrian Jade Company. It's a special green stone that can only be found there. And they were producing all sorts of things, trinkets, earrings, and stuff. That was what they produced, this is what the family lived off. But the Hormashi family was also a family of explorers and adventurers and... Wait, I'm not switching. Who's switching? It's not... Oh, no. Go back. Yes. So, okay. Okay. Um, so, he was a founding member of the Hungarian Geographic Society and the purpose of the society was to explore the white spots that were still on the maps. So, unknown territories. And there's even a mountain named after him, Edward Peak. It's in the border between China and Kyrgyzstan in the east. All right. This is his son, Olmarsi Dyrd, and um, he was also a famous ornithologist. He was traveling in Kyrgyzstan, he even went to China. Um, that sign on the, on the, in the middle actually means Olmarsi in Chinese. Huh? It's a phonetic translation. <coughs> And from his travels, he brought back 20,000 birds that he present, gave as a present to the um, museum in Budapest. Unfortunately, it was bombed in World War II, so nearly everything is gone. <clears throat> but he was also exploring the world. Yes, this is my great-grandfather, his son, Almasi um, Janos. Not so famous as his brother, but he was the one who uh, was in charge of the castle. And actually, that's the topic for today. So, how did he manage it? Um, well, he married he married Princess Marie Esterhazy. I'm sure they were in love, but she was also very rich, don't forget that. <laughs> <coughs> Which helps. And uh, after the war, after World War II, um, my family lost a lot of the land, so um, they began renting out rooms in the castle. And this is how the hotel business started. Also, he believed, because he married Marie, who was in the wheelchair, that they could not have the kids. And so they spent his money freely, because he always believed, I'm the last one, yeah? who should I save the money for? Nobody will come after me. And then this happened, uh, there's one, another slide, this is his brother Laszlo has uh, a picture of him in the, in the courtyard of Bernstein Castle as a young man. And he was a chain smoker, by the way. Um, nearly all the family pictures you can see with a cigarette. That was a time when the people believed um, smoking was healthy, if you have lung problems. Inhale deeply, it helps. <clears throat> 
Yes, so um, my great grandfather Janos, he financed all the a lot of those expeditions. Yeah, that, that's one a point I want to make. He thought, I'm the last, I don't care, I, I can't take it with me, um, so why not buy a new plane for Lanzlo? Yeah. And then this happened, my grandmother, <laughs> and suddenly it was, hmm, um, we have to stop doing this, uh, we somehow need to keep the possessions together. And as you can see, my great grandmother, she was uh, also a pilot. Actually, she was the first pilot in Austria, the first female pilot in Austria. What, he, what she did, um, she tried to find new sources of income. She tried to sell Porsche cars to Egypt, together with Laszlo after the war. Yeah? So um, the point I want to make is that uh, you always have to find new things. Um, be innovative, and if you have a small business, that it's a, your advantage. Use your advantages. It did not really work out, but they, at least they were trying, and it was very adventurous. Ah, this is um, my parents, and in the middle, my parents. They ran the place for 33 years, and on the right side, you can see my sister with her husband. My parents retired this spring, and since then, my sister and I we are responsible for everything. So, uh, now let's talk about the challenges that we face. One thing is, now we have this great, interesting story, family history, this is all very well, but what's the problem with it? That alone will not maintain the castle. Yeah? You don't get anything just because you have the history. You have to turn it into a product that people are actually willing to pay money for. Yeah? Just, I often have the impression that there are a lot of historic places that have really interesting stories, intriguing stories, but they somehow fail to turn that into a product. So what do we do? Uh, we offer guided tours, where we tell the history of the castle, the history of the family. Um, the castle itself is run as a hotel, with historic hotel rooms, where everything is kept in its original state. So when you live, if you stay at the castle, you can breathe the history in every room, and that's what you want to, um, the experience you want people to have. The authentic personalities, because we, the family, run the place and not some general manager. And a point I want to make is um, very important for us, don't be cheap. We are limited because we have only nine rooms, so we have space for around 25 people. And who are our competitors? Well, we can't compete with the big hotels regarding price because they will beat us. Yeah? They have um, more resources, they can offer rooms more cheaply. So what do we do? We take the fight to a battleground where we know we will win. Yeah? We are not cheap. Um, uh, we, we charge uh, money for, for the rooms, but we are talking to the people in person, we offer this unique atmosphere, we are uh, giving people something that they cannot buy elsewhere, and that's why we can decide the price. If you think about um, running a hostel or a hotel, and you um, <laughs> want to be cheaper than Hilton, well, good luck with that, because they have a really, really good infrastructure behind it, and you cannot beat them uh, with, the, with, with the price. Um, our family has survived because we do not rely on only one source of income. We have this hotel, we have a um, piece of forest still, luckily. Um, we have a stone quarry. And all these are the three, the three columns that support the business. <clears throat> one, day, uh, one year, maybe there are not so many guests in the hotel, but maybe um, they build a new street in Burgenland, which is very good for us because they buy the gravel from our family. Then in the next year, maybe like this year, it's very dry. Last year we have a huge uh, loss in the forest because of the, the drought, and because of the beetles. But the season uh, in the hotel was very good this year. So what I want to say is that if you have only one column, um, it's very difficult because you will have a bad year or maybe two bad years in a row and then you're in serious trouble. If you have more than one, um, you can sort of um, damp the effect of, 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 of one year. And uh, we have a wine project that came up this year, and we also use the story of the family to um, 
connected to the wine, how we want everybody to become explorers, like the Almost family did. On each bottle you have a number, which is the distance from Bernstein Castle to the vineyard. So yeah, um, you can do what the Almaty did. They were sitting in the library of the castle and they were planning their expeditions. And then on each bottle you also have a vehicle. So you can start your expedition with either a motorbike, um, uh, automobile or an airplane. And we present, <laughs> we present uh, Grape varieties that are not so well known, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I see there's a Fourmet here, but uh, Hatch Le Venu, it's not so well known in Austria. Uh, we have um, Pinella, which is a grape variety, but it's only 50 hectares. So we see the, we are looking for the, for the specialities and we want uh, people to become discoverers like the Omashis did. So we connect the history of the family to the wine project. We could have put it up. Uh, without the history, but then it would not be half as interesting, and people will probably not buy the wine. Yeah, um, how much time do I have? A little bit? Three more minutes. Three more minutes, okay, well, I have to hurry up. Okay, so, um, yes, very important why we survived to involve the family. So, we are splitting the work, my sister and I, which is very, it's a big relief, yeah, if you don't have to carry the responsibility uh, on your own, you can support each other. And you can put people that you really trust into key positions. My grandmother was cheated uh, a lot because she was alone and she could not watch everybody. So we had this stone mill I was talking about, we were producing trinkets and, and jewelry out of the green stone. And what happened is that the workers and the, the people in the shops, they were all corrupt. Um, <laughs> they were producing their own stuff during the working hours. They took the, the raw material out of the storage produced their own things and then the other people sold it in the shops and we never saw any money from anything. And, but in the end uh, we had to close the factory because of this. Yeah? So it's very important that you have people that you can trust in the key positions and if you can fill these positions with family members, all the better. Yeah, We talked about connections, connect with others. We are part of different groups, Castle Hotels and Mansions, Castle Road. Um, organizations. Uh, why is this so important? Because if you type in Google um, holiday castle Austria, you will not find us. Maybe we have 25 beds, it's impossible. But you will find this organization, Castle Hotels and Mansions. Uh, and from there, they link to each member. Uh, so you cannot be uh, a lonely fighter today, you have to connect with others. Um, you cannot connect with anybody, you should of course find, find the right people to connect with. For example, this is the most important organization for us, Castle Hotels and Mansions, um, houses with history and um, most of the time privately owned. This is the, what keeps them together. Yeah, and actually it's the last point here, um, very personal one. Um, I was faced with a decision if I want to take over and you have to be really sure that you want it as a young entrepreneur. You have to be sure what you're getting into, the long hours. Uh, very important for me, find a partner who's with you. I mean, otherwise you're just on the castle on your own. And um, if you have one more member in the family who can also work in the company, it's very, very important. And we, um, because we run it as a hotel, it's only seasonal, so it's five months per year. And we work seven days a week. Yes, we're a bit like a submarine crew. <laughs> we can't uh, leave because we live in the same building. Yes, and it's very important that you create this positive working environment yeah? because you can't. Usually, you have an office job. You finish a Friday, you go home. We can't do that. We work for seven days a week for five months. It's very crucial that you maintain a positive environment. Yeah, to sum up. Develop a product that people can buy. Don't rely on one source of income. Involve the family wherever it's possible. Connect with the others. And the last point, be sure that you really want it <laughs> before you take it. And uh, I will finish on this note that my great-great-grandfather, Alma Sidiart, the one who brought the birds back from Asia, he was actually skipped in the line because 
his father said he's not suited to take it over. Yeah? And I think that the people and the business will be better off if you don't follow these strict rules of heritage that the oldest son has to take it over, but to be realistic about it. And if there is nobody suited, maybe it's better to sell it. Thank you very much.